joining in. Okay, so the recording is on and I guess we can go ahead. So first is a quote that I would like you to read. Isn't this true? Too often we give children answers to remember than giving problems to solve. And also adding on, when we are giving problems to solve, sometimes it becomes it goes beyond their emotional capacity. Am I right? Majority of times we give answers to remember. Is that true according to you? Okay. Okay. Okay, yes, says Duha, Salva. What about others? Shamim. Okay, Atiya. Now, what was the last problem that your child solved? I would like to hear from you first. Any symbol, don't say it's the math problem that he solved last day. No. Other than that, what is the problem that your child solved last? Any simple problem. Who can say? You can either type or you can put in the chat box. Uh, by the time you are remembering, I'll just share one of my experience that happened quite recently. I was about to leave from uh, home to office and I was wearing a white socks. Okay, so as I was going to step out, I saw that the floor was one area of the floor was full of ink. My daughter was playing with it. She was into some experiment, which I couldn't enjoy, obviously, at that moment when I was stepping out. My face started changing. And she suddenly asked me to wait there and brought me a pair of chapels and asked me to wear it. She was already ready with the materials to clean uh, the floor as well. And I wore the chapel. And as I crossed the ink, ink spot, she just asked me to remove it. And she took it to the uh, washroom to wash it. So. This was such a simple situation with such a simple solution, but we miss focusing on solution in such moments. Am I right? OK, here we have Anisha saying, last time my son given water for my little one while I'm praying. That is nice to hear. My daughter is watch always watching if the stove is on because I keep forgetting. OK, that's so nice to her. OK, Shemin says, yes, what about others? Rubik's Cube, I'm not asking for such problems, Alvi. Najiba. What else? Who else can share? Any problem, any simple to large problems that your children solve? Anything else? Looks after the younger one, okay. What else? When there was some problem that was there, your children stepping up and att attending to that. Any other situation you can remember? I had pain in my legs. My four-year-old walked walked on legs to give me relief. Nice. My daughter created a public uh, streak board as we keep forgetting a family habit. Okay. <laughs> nice. Okay. So kids are naturally problem solvers until and unless we kill their ability to think that way and solve the problems. So in today's session, we are discussing these aspects, four mistakes from us that will hinder the problem solving uh, ability of our children. And secondly is four ways to instill problem solving mindset in the children. Only if their mindset is right, they'll be able to go ahead and solve the problem. And then the third one is a four step process to train your children in problem solving. So these are the things that we are going to deal. And I am Mariam. This is my small, not small, very big, smaller, big family that uh, you see on the screen. And uh, my motherhood experience, it, it actually taught me a lot of facts through trial and error process. And here through Think, 
we are spreading positive parenting awareness so that you don't have to repeat the same mistakes that we all did okay and also if you are making mistakes we help you quickly come out of it and um through this initiative we focus on giving you the apt support to raise emotionally strong next generation that is what cricket is all about my elder one is 13 years and my younger one is 8 i am a counselor a parent mentor and the co-founder of cricket so that is a small intro of me so let's get into the first area that we are going to discuss which is the four mistakes that we need to avoid and i'll be telling you a story this is a real story it is the story of ankita and two kids arnav and anand okay the problem that they were facing is arnav keeps coming late after play time every day almost and mother is quite angry with this she has already tried uh, beating scolding and it's not showing any effect every day right from the morning she keeps murmuring listen to the story well okay there's a question at the end okay <laughs> so every day in the morning she keeps murmuring like uh, you know the moment when he wakes up he, she says um today also if you are uh, planning to come late then i'll give you nice i don't know how to make this boy obey uh, racing you seems such a waste of time etc etc she keeps murmuring right from the beginning okay and these are the things that she, she is constantly bombarding on arnav but today when she got angry arnav was constantly saying that i don't know why i am like this mama and she, he started crying but then ankita she was already so angry that she couldn't tolerate the cries so she was scolding and saying asking him to stop the cry and she's shouting and asking arnav to stop the cry this day when she got so mad like this and uh, things were escalating his little little brother anand also came in as you might have noticed in some situations when one of the child is being scolded the other one also comes in and they feel like they are quite excited about what is happening so this day anand was very excited about what was uh, happening and anand was suggesting some consequences mama you do this mama you do that can you guess what he was suggesting? Because Ankita wanted a solution somehow. She wants to establish a real consequence to um, Arnav so that he comes early the next day. And any guesses on what his little brother suggested as a consequence if he comes late? No, it was not that. I will call him. I didn't get you exactly. Today, Ar Arnav has been has come home, but he's late. That is the issue. So his little brother is suggesting a consequence that mama can implement. A consequence that they are probably used to every time. Yeah, punishment. What punishment? Don't allow him to go to play. Okay, that is one hitting that already Ankita does. So similar to what Sumaya said, uh, what uh, Anand suggested was no playtime or games cut for the next day if Arnav comes late. No donut, no screen time. Yes, Ramsina. Or like, you know, Ar Arnav has to do this house, uh, some house shows the next day if he comes late. So these were the consequences that Anand could think about. And they finalized on one of these solutions. So they finalized on one of these consequences. Now, what I want from you all is, you heard the story, a real story. So what went right in this situation? And what went wrong? <laughs> Farhana, your mic is on. Farhana Yasmin. What are the things that went right in the situation and what are the things that went wrong? Murmuring the mother, uh, right or wrong?
Selva says, hitting and scolding went wrong. Yes. Right part is mom asked them to find a solution. OK. Actually, mom didn't ask them to find a solution. Mom was so angry that the brother started pitching in solutions. Murmuring went wrong at first. Yes. Sorry, ma'am. Uh, OK, for the mic on. Fine. Please call me Mariam. Right part is that to start hearing the big kid. OK, did Ankita start hearing the big kid? She didn't explain why she is scolding him. Went wrong. OK. The kid is understanding that he is doing something wrong. You mean that is a positive here, Aramsina? Obviously, the child has to understand that there is a mistake from his end. Right part is that he learned that there would be consequence for actions. OK, we'll be checking whether that is the right part or wrong part soon. Anything else? Like in every situation that goes wrong for us uh, parents, here also Ankita had the right intention that her child has to be safe. He has to reach home at the right time, isn't it? So the intention, I would say that is right. And as I see a lot of you uh, parents on a daily basis, um, what I understand is in the majority of the situations, our intention is right. Only in a very few, say 5% of the situations, we intend the wrong thing. So Maya says, mom should have sat with the child down and asked him how she can make. OK, we'll come to the solution. I just want you to analyze what went right and what went wrong. Right, when the ch other child wanted to solve, Ankita got some time to think, OK? <laughs> that is a positive that happened. <laughs> Anything else? So today we'll be discussing about four major mistakes that happened from Ankita. The first major mistake that I would like to focus on is we adults, we focus a lot on the problem at hand. We focus too much on the problem. Such that the kids also start focusing on the problem instead of coming to the right solution. If you think you'll meet adults who focus a lot on the problem at hand without going into the solution. Have you seen such people who are constantly in the circle of problem, talking again and again of the problem? They are themselves unable to come out of it. I know such people. And it's right that they were raised by parents who highly focus on the problem at hand, who you know, who are not at all um, lenient about any mistake that happens from the child. OK, so Maya has seen such a, such a person. Zainab has, Salva, OK, Farhana. And as adults, they cannot tolerate even the slightest mistake that comes from the partner or from the children. They make a big fuss of whatever is happening. And even if the mistake is not made by the partner. What I've seen is they make it such a big issue that even the partner doesn't know what to do from their side. These people, they get so angry and irritated that life becomes so hard for them and also for people who are living with them. So focusing too much on the problem is a mistake that happened to Ankita. And we'll see how that can be solved. Thank you. OK, Ranshimol. Now, the second mistake is when this mom started thinking of solution, she went to strict disciplining tools like scolding, beating, showing irritation, which are all negatives. This leads to rebellious nature in her children. When kids are not dealt with kindness, they fail to give back kindness to everyone around. Have you noticed that? I have personally experienced that. I, as I went through a phase when I was not tolerating my children's mistake, I could quickly see that reflection on my children. They were also so 
you know, so strict with whatever was happening in them from people around. Now, what happens is Arnav is not knowing it. Arnav, uh, for Arnav, it is a mistake that is happening. He's not purposefully making it. But when he turns rebellious, what happens is he will purposefully not come home on time. If we are using harsh disciplinary tools, we will raise kids who are very rebellious, who won't give ear to what we are saying. Sorry, Adila, this session is in English, and we have people in, uh, in this platform who are English-speaking people. OK, you can uh, contact Kring to know about our Malayalam sessions. I'm sorry for that. So the second mistake that happened was using harsh disciplinary tools, which will only lead to kids who are rebellious and kids who purposefully not obey what we are saying. Maybe sometimes we uh, there will be people here who are, uh, you know, handling kids who have reached that level. Now, the third mistake is the way she reacts is making the child feel bad about himself. Like you might have heard him saying that I cannot do this. However, I try, it is not happening. Why is this happening every time? He's telling himself. As he feels bad about himself, he will feel he will uh, turn less confident, which again has lasting impact even into his adulthood. That is a third mistake. Now, fourth is when he is crying, she is forcing him to stop. None of you noticed that. I'm so sad about that. None of you could realize that even this is a mistake. Because that is a problem that is there in our uh, society. A person crying, we just want them to stop crying. We are not focusing on what is the emotion that is going through them. And this, forcing them to stop crying, that will not equip them to handle their emotions rightly. Once he keeps on suppressing emotions now, it negatively affects his mental health. And higher are the chances that it comes out as anger in near future or there are chances that he gets into depression or other mental health issues as he turns into adulthood. So we will be revisiting this slide later with the solutions. So these are the four mistakes that I would like you to highly give importance to and keep away from. And now moving on to four ways to equip them with the right mindset to problem solve. So as I said, in order to problem solve, uh, the first thing that we need to set is the right mindset where they gain the confidence and they can take the initiative to go ahead and problem solve. Farhana says, yes, Mariam, I remember my childhood. I don't like share share my things. People around us blame me. And gradually, I start hating myself. Yes. Uh, if you look around, majority of the children have difficulty in sharing. And especially when they are young, it takes time for them to realize that certain things doesn't belong to me. At that time, if we don't handle it rightly, it leads to uh, situations like this. And Ms. Jaya says, I experienced this from my son. Okay. So let's uh, check out these four steps to set the right mindset. The first way is to impart problem solving mindset is that we have to think from the child's point of view. If we are of the mindset that, oh, he never obeys, he's disrespecting me, he's good for nothing, then we will only impart these kind of mindsets to our children, just like here Farhana was saying. And Ankita, if she thinks from Arnav's point of view, I'm talking about the case since uh, people are joining in. I'm just referring to the case that we discussed initially. Um, if Arnav, uh, Ankita could have thought from Arnav's point of view, it is actually what happens is he's not purposefully coming lead. What happens is he gets carried away in the play that he's engaged in. After all, you know, he can, she can also think like, after, after all, he's a child who loves to play. There are a lot of mothers who face difficulty that their children are completely on screen and is not going out to play. But Arnav is a happy child who is going out happily and playing. So that is a positive. So if she thinks from Arnav's point of view, she'll understand that the problem is not Arnav. 
the problem is that he he's carried away, getting carried away in the play and is forgetting this this realization actually it can change the whole way how Ankita is reacting now the second thing is teach kids that mistakes are wonderful opportunities to learn from if we shame them and scold them from ev for every mistake that they are making this is not going to happen and sometimes even if we don't shame and blame them so this, from somewhere they pick up this sense that mistakes are uh, you know something that are very bad and they associate that uh, negative to themselves they somehow develop that sense that i have to be perfect we need to teach them over and over again that we humans all of us we make mistakes and what we have to be very stern on is we are not we have to see that we are not making or repeating those mistakes again so in order to focus on this there's there's a small action step that i am giving you every week have this discussion with your child what is one mistake that you made last week and what is the lesson that you learned from it am i clear also, as your child shares his mistake and um, his learnings from that, you can you can also add on to it according to your perspective. And also, it will be good for those children who are not very comfortable in um, disclosing their mistake and their and their learning. You can slowly equip them too by building the right bond with them and also by sharing um, maybe one of your mistakes, something that. Uh, is okay to share with the child one of your mistake and you're learning from that okay i saw so many thumbs up i couldn't um capture the names so i guess you are all in with it this can be started right when they are three or four i guess you can just try it with your child okay and as they grow mistakes will be different the angle in which they are seeing it is different for a small child a mistake can be they built a tower and it crumbled very fast you can help them problem solve it by making the base wider okay so according to the age you bring in your creativity and cater it to the situation so all set you're all going to do this for the coming week ready Okay, Shamim, Febi, okay, Salva, Jasmine, Hiba, Lulu, Anisha, okay. Now, moving on to the third. Kids don't always need an exact answer. They ask millions of questions right when they are small. For example, it can be as simple as, Mama, why is Papa coming late today? I'm waiting. Why is my favorite dress still not dry? It can be anything. The list goes on. And when they ask such questions, revert the same question and ask that back to them. For example, when the child says that Papa is not home yet, why is it like this? You can say, I'm also wondering, wondering the same thing. Why isn't your dad coming? What could it be? What can be the reason? Ask them the same question back. This actually sets them into thinking and they come with answers child may say papa might have got more work and later you can also add in like maybe traffic can also be an issue that is also there's a chance for that also so just shift your role from answer giving people or answer givers to prompters who make them think so here is a second step for you i'll be giving you these two assignments today okay and these two assignments are given to you so that you benefit from the session because the majority of the time we hear a lot of things but then when it comes to implementation part we fail there okay that's why i'm giving you homeworks so the next time your child asks a question try prompting it back to them just uh, involve in the question and prompt it back to them that is your second homework now the fourth way to set their mindset is don't spoon feed them with right and wrong this is something that i've seen quite uh, commonly don't just say that hitting is not right make them think do you think hitting is right why can you think why hitting is wrong can you think why hitting won't solve the situation 
Or another example can be like, you know, any values that we hold. Um, yeah, we as a family, we stay away from alcohol. But there are families outside who use it, right? So you can ask, like, you know, some people are okay with um, having alcohol. Uh, so what do you think about that? Can you think of any reason why they are okay with having it? What can be the reason? So such questions that will prompt them to think a lot about that and they come up with the answer uh, and that is much much better than we telling that this is right and that is wrong and the third situation that i would like to discuss is in those situations when the child is very hesitant to um you know uh, stick on to our values for example just as um farhan i guess she was um saying uh, imagine a child who is not ready to share the child feels that it's all mine and you can say like for example you feel everything is yours but i feel just the opposite can you think of why i feel like that and you can also give in your response like i believe that if we give god will give us more what do you think about that what happens when uh, all the people in the world believe that i'm not going to share so such thought provoking questions that will help your children in future to um, stick on to the right, to choose the right in all situations. And it gets them into the problem solving mentality. So regarding rights and wrong, get them to thinking and be open to whatever they are seeing without shaming them. These uh, four things that will help them set the right mindset to problem solve. Next, what is left is the four step process to um, help them problem solve now before going into that these were the four mistakes that we dealt with in the beginning right and the first mistake of focusing on the problem that can be solved to an extent by the four steps that we discussed now by um setting their right taking steps to set their right mindset and also it will be continued through the four step process that we are going to discuss so to an extent by setting the, by implementing the steps that will set their right mindset you can um help them focus on the solution instead of the problem now uh when you try to implement this when you try to help them brainstorm the solutions or brainstorm the reasons some children can be very open to it but some children they may not be quite open to it they will not listen to you. If you feel that they are not open to it, it can be due to several reasons, right from a poor bonding that you have with your children, or it can be because you are making the second mistake of using harsh disciplinary tools, or it can be that kids are not taught to regulate their emotions rightly, or because you are not dealing with their emotions in the right way and they feel um cornered every time and it's not easy to stay away from all these mistakes and to attend to their to our children in the best way in every time uh such situations happen um i was a stay-at-home mom in the beginning and now i am an entrepreneur uh under a high busy schedule and i know how both the stages are i know how tiring and uh, draining both these phases are only difference is that it happens with different situations. You get drained differently. And also, I'm seeing my husband, who is, um, by God's grace, who is a very involved dad. I see him right from the beginning, the challenges that he is also going through when we want to give our best to our children. And that is where, through Crink, we are helping parents like you to be your best self to your children. So to establish uh, the right influence and bonding over your child by setting your expectation rightly and also in bringing your child up to that expectation in uh, staying away from harsh punishments and adopting positive disciplining strategies so we have trained over the period we have trained several parents uh, to implement positive disciplining tools to control their anger and to manage their time better and solve a lot of issues that are revolving around parenthood and their self so all this is possible with the help of Kring's parent mentor.
if you have dedicated time of 20 to 30 minutes in a week that is the only commitment that you need to commit to us if you're ready to commit maximum 30 minutes a week then we can guide you we can be by your side and guide you as a guide your family and if family is a priority i guess this is not a big ask 20 to 30 minutes a week is not a big ask however uh, busy schedule you are going through because this is the this is our responsibility that we need to do for our children so those who would like to uh, take Kring support and talk to our parent advisor you can um, fill a form that uh, shruti can you put the form link here so Shruti will be putting, yes, you can uh, just fill the form below. Najma, you can get in touch with Shruti. And Shruti, can you put your phone number also? You can get in touch with Shruti. Shruti, you can get in touch with Shruti. Malayalam sessions in a particular details. OK, so those who are interested in taking the sessions, you can fill this form. You can save it. And next, we'll be moving ahead to the four. Uh, steps that you need to implement with your children to help them with the problem solving. Before that, I'll give you just two minutes to fill the form. Or you can contact Shruti in the number that is provided here. Okay, so let's move ahead. Next, we are going into the four-step process and how that will impact. Um, we'll be taking the first case again and seeing how they are making it practical, how Ankita um, made it practical with Arnav and Anand. Okay. So the first step in problem solving is to understand the real problem. We know Ankita was focusing on the problem. To focus on the solution, the first thing that we need is to understand the real problem that is there in front of us and to train children also to look at the real problem. Because sometimes what appears to us can be quite different from what the real reason is there. Here, Ankita was assuming that Arnav is not purposefully coming on time, but that was not the problem that was there. Arna was keeping on forgetting or he's not aware of the time. So the real problem was not that the child was disobedient. The child was getting carried away in the play. And there is nothing that reminds him of the time when the time is up. Okay. So understanding the real problem is a skill that we need to teach our children. And the second step is brainstorm. Once we have understood the problem, brainstorm possible solutions. Here, Ankita and two kids, all three of them joined and started brainstorm, brainstorming. Now, this is the main area where the difference comes. Now, the problem is different. Earlier, Anand suggested a consequence, right? Because he was focusing on some other problem that Arnav is not purposefully coming here. Now the problem has changed. Arnav is missing the time. There is nothing to remind him. That is a real problem. So Angita suggested something. Uh, she asked, um, shall I come over when it's time and just remind you, just give you a call from the park and then I'll return so that you can finish your play in, a, in five minutes or 10 minutes and then come home. When Ankita puts forward that suggestion, she's actually focusing on the solution and not the uh, punishment or consequence. Then. Uh, then came Anand's suggestion, and that was a superb suggestion. What he suggested was, let's buy a watch for Arna so that he can set alarm in it. And when kids face a problem, we need to train them to list out the possible solutions like this. Some of those solutions can be you know, so weird, uh, we cannot go ahead with it, but let them list. Only by doing that process over time, they'll also get skilled in it. And they listed, all three of them listed several solutions um, 
by discussing with each other. So when you train your children to list solutions, uh, you can train uh, like, you know, they can list on their own or they can discuss with you or relevant people to come up with more solutions. So that is the second step. Now, the third step is to pick one from the solutions that are already set or already listed. And here we need to think that it not always, it's not like, you know, our solutions are the best always. It's not like that. As a parent who is implementing this with my children, I know that kids have absolutely, uh, you know, fabulous ideas and fabulous solutions that are there. So here they picked an uh, Anand solution, which is to buy a watch for Arna so that he can set an alarm. They went ahead with that. They bought the watch, and that is how they implement implemented. So the third step is picking one from the solution and implementing it. And the fourth one is <clears throat> uh, review, revisit this, and review it regularly. So after a week, they again, uh, you know, came together um, and analyzed how the last week went, and they came to know that. Arna was there on time for five days last week. And for two uh, two other days in which he didn't turn on time, in those two days, he forgot to take his watch. So there, Ankita, instead of focusing on the two days that he missed, she focused on the five days that he gained or he succeeded. She appreciated what went well. And also, she gave him confidence to, um, you know, to uh, see the coming week more positively and to aim at last week he came home five days on time so let's focus on six or seven the next week that is what she imparted so by implementing these steps in your child's life you'll be giving them an absolute life skill where when a problem arises they'll be equipped to think about the solutions and will be able to choose the best solution instead of going again and again on the problem See, see, you could see the difference, right? The solution that Anand suggested in the beginning is quite different from what he's suggesting when the focus is problem solving. Could you realize the difference? Could you? Yes or no? OK, Salam so says yes. What about others? OK, there are thumbs up. Sorry, I missed seeing them. OK. Okay, maybe so my arm is free arm. Okay, fine. So that is the difference that happens when we focus a lot on the solution instead of the problem. And also the disciplining strategies that we use that also sets a lot of, uh, it has a lot of impact in your children. If they are constantly using um, violence or negative words and actions to uh, when it happens, when it, when they are with their peers or their siblings, let's address first. Let's see how what is the disciplining strategies that we use. Maybe at times we'll have our own explanations. He's not obeying at all. I cannot handle it otherwise. I'm busy. I cannot. So there are a lot of excuses that we tell ourselves. But uh, take it from me, you can implement positive disciplining strategies, and you can change the entire mindset of your children. Okay, so these were the things that I wanted to discuss with you. We dealt with um, the four mistakes that come from us, ways to instill problem-solving mindset, and also four steps to train them in problem-solving. I hope this helped, this session helped, and we also discussed about two homeworks, and I guess you'll do it with your children, and also do message me and um, say how it went, how those two homeworks went. Okay, thank you, Ms. Ria. Do follow us in all social media, in Instagram. In Instagram, uh, those who are following me, do go ahead and follow Parenting Crink. And uh, we are there in Facebook, LinkedIn, in all the platforms. And this is Crink's number that you see on the screen. If you have any struggles or aspirations related to parenting, please feel free to message. Thank you, Sumaya, Aisha, Shams, Shehnaz, Nabil, Adian. Fatima, Kamar, Neetu, Juleila, thank you. Thanks a lot. Is there any doubts that you would like to ask? Or else we can wind up the session. Thank you, Selva, Farhana. Take care. Nurlane, situation was thought through. Safina, Naufia.
Thank you, Rafia. Is there any doubts? Turning four and its tantrums. Yes. Neetu, just um, focus on handling his emotions rightly because this is a period where they get a lot of emotions and they don't know how to handle. But the way in which you handle and accept his emotions and focus on the solution, that will highly help him handle his emotions on the go. Okay, we do have trainings on how to handle the emotions of your children as well. Okay, good to know that you have takeaways, Renshimol. Can we apply the solutions in boarding campus? Um, can you please explain, Nabil? Is it that your child is uh, staying far away from you or are you in charge of a lot of children? My pleasure, Neetu. How to be silent when child behavior, when we are not liking our, how our child is behaving? OK. Farhana, we'll have to see how your child is behaving and in what all situations uh, your child is behaving like that. And um, it is not that we have to be silent. It is that we have to guide them rightly. And for that, we have to be patient. So what I see with mothers is when mothers and fathers learn how to handle the situations that are there in front of us, we get patient on the go. It's because we don't know how to handle. We get so angry with them and we burst out. But then with implementing the right disciplining tools and in developing a right bond and influence over them, you'll see that the disciplinary issues are less and you are more calmer. Nabil says, I am a teacher. OK. So um, a few of these things can be implemented like this straight away with um, any child, I guess. But then um, as the whole session was focusing on parents, uh, there is a reason for that because the way a parent should connect with the child uh, can be quite uh, a sub, uh, slightly different from how a teacher um, or it is not the how, like both of them have to be connected. But how we do that can be different. So um, I guess you'll have takeaways to implement with your children there. Will these techniques see uh, differ according to different ages? It's not the techniques that we that differ according to the ages, but then how we implement it can be different. Okay, Aryan says bye. Take care. It's good to involve other kids to solve the problem. Like if they suggest wrong situations, it will affect their relations. Is it good to involve other children to solve the problem? Like if they suggest wrong solutions, it will affect their relations. Uh, Fabi, what did you mean by involving other children? Like, is it the siblings that you mean or cousins and all in the family? And when it comes to problem solving, the best thing is you first start with yourself and also your child and then start involving the other children because your child will also by then learn how to handle that. I have done what you suggested and given up. I have never grounded him nor do I like giving harsh consequences as he enjoys his playtime. For 11-year-old, what else shall work? See, Sumaya, we'll have to just see what are the behaviors that are coming from the 11-year-old and what are its root causes. Please approach uh, Team Kring for the same. Let's do an analysis and see where things are, uh, you know, where that gap is. With all these techniques differ according to age group. Yeah, I guess I have answered. It's not the techniques that differ, but how we are, uh, you know, how we are uh, implementing that can differ according to different situations. So Maya says, I spoke to him and he says, I'm strict with him. Okay. Then you will have to um, work more on bonding steps. See, as parents, there will be times when we have to be, um, we have to guide them and we have to be stern on some facts, right? This is possible and this is not. There will be situation like that. We shouldn't be bending all those. We have to be stern there. But then how you be stern and how you are there with them in other situations that happen, that matters a lot. So focus on building the right kind of bond with them 
and also set the boundaries in the right way so that you know uh, when you focus more on the bonding he'll slowly get that thing out of his mind that you are very strict and also another thing that uh, is very important is uh, attending attending to their emotions in the right way acknowledge a lot of their emotions and see that you are handling their emotions rightly giving them space for their emotions so that uh, they it doesn't appear that you are strict on them can you please mute your mic uh, someone's mic is on uh, can you please mute your mic um okay so that is it uh rabia faisal my child is four year old she is going to school at, at the first time and she starts crying now she's telling i'm not going to school how can i overcome this um how long has been the child uh how when did their academic year start uh rabia in which place are you so initially children will have difficulty in adjusting don't try to force your child to school that will again create an emotional um trauma it can create a trauma in them because they won't be accepting at all uh, there's a way how you can attend to their emotions um i guess those parents in kring know how to address their emotions by acknowledging and guiding them rightly so um if the school is also willing you can be there with the child for some time and make the child comfortable in the environment and get him attached to the teacher and slowly withdraw yourself from the child if that will something that will work for you mentorship for students we don't provide mentorship for students but yes for um, those who are in the late teenage we do have counseling sessions for them okay so that is it all your questions are done so let's meet in some other session soon see you thank you all for joining take care